Okay. Bonsoir et bienvenue à la conférence d'architecture de Chaspar Schmidlin et Lucas Fölmi. Euh, ce sont deux architectes qui travaillent chacun indépendamment, mais ils ont euh, déjà beaucoup de disons, liens euh, qui, qui les relaient et projets qu'ils ont créés ensemble. Déjà, la, euh, les études qu'ils ont fait ensemble à la ETH à Zurich, donc l'école polytechnique. Et euh, un premier projet euh, qu'ils ont fait encore en tant qu'étudiants, ils ont changé un garage, une, euh, une station-service en lieu d'art euh, pour la galerie von Bartha à Bâle. Et euh, le projet dont ils vont parler ce soir est aussi un lieu d'art, c'est le muséum Souche qui se trouve dans les Grisons et euh, qu'ils ont donc euh, créé, rénové euh, ensemble. Et euh, comme vous, on le voit euh, déjà sur la photo euh, qui est derrière euh, en projection, c'est vraiment un endroit qui mélange euh, les matériaux naturels avec euh, une esthétique contemporaine, avec euh, un savoir-faire euh, local et euh, qui crée donc un, un lieu d'art euh, pour une collection... Euh, une résidence, un auditorium, donc euh, avec beaucoup de fonctions. Et euh, peut-être juste un petit détail, euh, je suis sûre que vous allez en parler, mais euh, pour euh, l'endroit, l'emplacement euh, de, de ce musée, Muséum Souche, pour y arriver, il faut faire un, prendre un petit train, on, on longe une petite vallée, et euh, pour s'arrêter euh, à, à, à ce village, à Souche, il faut vraiment euh, prévenir le conducteur en amont, sinon euh, il ne s'arrête pas. Et, euh, et après, on découvre donc cet endroit euh, vraiment assez magique euh, où euh, en fait, la nature rentre jusqu'à l'intérieur, euh, les entrailles du musée. Il y a même une, une petite source, une grotte qui est à l'intérieur... Euh, donc je me réjouis beaucoup que vous soyez là ce soir et euh, de découvrir avec vous ce projet. Euh, je vous laisse la parole euh, et je pense que vous allez changer en anglais. Oui, ok. Merci. Alors, merci Claire pour cette introduction. However, as agreed, we are allowed to do this presentation in English. Um, uh, thank you for your words. It's pretty much sums up the way we work together in, in the past few years. And um, you mentioned that there were two like projects before we did this museum, Souche, and we just quickly want to, to have a short look at those because they really influenced also our work and they influenced later on also the, the, the strategies we had with the museum. Um, the first one, with this art, art gallery von Bartha in Basel. It's a former gas station that we could transform. Um, it's an industrial building. And in the floor plan, you see this industrial structures. It, um, it, was, it, it was a grown um, situation over many years, and we had to somehow simplify the rooms and uh, create more like functional, Um, white spaces, um, just perfect to display young art, contemporary art. Um, so the rooms are more or less white cubes with industrial um, elements like this shed roofs. Then two or three years later, um, or I think two years later, yes, we had a chance to renovate um, an medieval building in the Swiss Alps, in the Engadin, very close to Austria, really remote. And um, the building was in very bad condition when we started the work. Um, but finally we could explore all the local materials and the stone and implemented also new shapes or like contemporary elements such as white cubes in contrast to the existing. And so we were somehow, we had some, some experience we had uh, which really helped us to, um, to find a good strategy to work with this museum, Souche, um, which is actually quite large. You see here in winter um, a view from the bridge. You see that there are many, like two, three buildings 
forming this museum. So it's not just only one building, it's more like a part of, of a village, um, the village Sush. And where is it oriented? It's um, actually the center of Europe. If we zoom into Switzerland, it's in the east. It, there's this Alpine Valley called uh, Engadin. And in the Engadin, they're like, similar like a pearl chain, they're like vi small villages along a road. And one of, one of these pearls is actually Suge, um, which was somehow rediscovered with this project. And this just gives us a, some sort of dimension. So Chlin in the valley, and it's surrounded by um, high mountains. So these mountains is really the, it frames the whole area. They're really, the, this, they are really important. Um, they're just for the atmosphere, they create everything. And if you look at an older photograph, maybe 100 years old, um, you see this is um, Sush, this is the river crossing Sush and in, subdividing it into two parts. It's quite a small village, and if you see a more recent photo, like two years ago, it's, it has grown much. It still has the same scale, so to say, um, which also, of course, influenced us in what would be the right, the right strategy to, to build an art museum, or how, how do we deal with the existing structure. Um, so, one of our first sites, um, we took this photo, and um, this is just what it looked like. This is the, um, the brewery building from the 19th century, and this is the building everything started with. This is the first building that this investor bought and had the idea to, to do a, an art gallery, a museum. It was not so clear at that time, and um, with the, with, so there you see the transformation that we did finally, and it, it shows pretty much the strategy we followed, really restoring what we have in a very delicate way, um, implementing raw materials like copper, wood, and um, the whole additional um, exhibition spaces. We more or less dug like underground, so they are hardly visible, and we formed the landscape around the museum with these stone walls, and they somehow organize and, and cover up these additional rooms. So we didn't want to grow, actually, in scale, um, but still have surprisingly huge rooms, exhibition rooms on the ground. Um, here you see a model of the whole project showing um, just seeing, it shows us a little bit how it's organized. This is this 19th century brewery building, and then later we found out that this building also was historically part of the brewery. It's, um, this is actually where the brewery culture, so to say, began in this village. And later on, one more building um, was, was attached to the whole project, and then finally, we, we could somehow or reorganize the program a little bit easier. So at the beginning, there were so many ideas like museum, like apartments, everything squeezed into this building. And so adding two more buildings that allowed us to, to sort out the program in an easier way. And they're just, this is just a historical photo of the um, old brewery, and this just shows a little bit also the culture of these brewery guys. And when we when we actually came there the first time, we saw these barrels still in those caves. And then, really funny when it when it was um, when it changed to a museum. Somehow, like this reminded us of a barrel, but it's um, it's a piece of art. It's by Piotr. Piotr Klansky, it's like a spinning... Miroslav Balka. Uh, Miroslav Balka, sorry, Piotr. Miroslav Balka, it's, uh, it's a spinning um, 
cylinder which reflects this um, this cave. It's uh, really intense when you walk around this cylinder. Um, so from the beginning, the idea of having site-specific um, projects in the in the project or in the museum was one of the of the key points. Then here we found old engineered plants from the from this uh, building and what it shows is that there was like a cooling tower so how did it work they just put in ice and snow into this tower and then had like an, an, a very elaborate um, tunnel system or tube system that would cool all the, the, the caves on cool all the storage um, rooms where the beer was stored um, and so this cooling tower, you see it here, this is a section to the 19th century brewery and this is the older brewery um, and there's the street in between. And this cooling tower became a key element um, in this project and you also in these dot lines you see the potential of extending and enlarging the project on the ground and also adding like a tunnel under the street and then this is what, then what it looked like. And here you see now this, this uh, cooling tower, which we dug one more story into the ground, and also we, we put like a, a, like a light crown on top. So the result is that light can come in, natural light come in in this point to the very core of the, of the project. And this is uh, what you see here in the plan, is a, a work by um, uh, Monika Sosnowska. Polish artist, and then she immediately started building a model of this, uh, of her, of her proposal uh, for this space, and then we did like renderings how it would, how it, how it would look like, and finally then really look like this. It's like a, it's like a spinal so of the building. It really, it reinforces the importance of this room um, for the museum, and so this light tower puts like it gets light in natural light and at the same time it's also like a signal so when there's activity in the museum you immediately like it casts out or like it it's like it's, it's even talking to the to the village and, and it just shows some activity it does it in winter and it also does it in summer Yes, and here we see the, again the model with the di uh, distribution of the program. So after the passing the bridge, wi which is like an entrance to this whole uh, assemblage of buildings, uh, we come to the, this part, which is like a, it's, it's a very um, uh, old house where we put it the entrance. So we, we take the people and you can enter kind of underneath the building, then you are in this infrastructural building, which has bistro, it's the entrance, um, there are offices. In the old big K barn, there's the auditorium, which is kind of separate from the other buildings, but still part of the whole area. Then you enter underneath the building and you come into the main museum space which is this part, which is against uh, the mountain. So we have like this sequence of buildings, which uh, makes in the end the museum is between the mountain and the river. So in between the nature. Another important building is this artist house, which can be used by artists, and which was the former house from the priest. And in front, there's the church, which in every small villages of this pearl chain is one of the main building. So this assemblage, which we also see in the next image in the plan, makes kind of a, a group of historical buildings. And the challenge was to implement now the program inside of it. If we see now the plan, we see again the roofs, which uh, um, speak together and we have here the main entrance after the bridge we have uh, areas garden areas or these terraces which are always in between the houses and one of the main terraces is the street 
which when it's a, a street, which is a, like a plaza, it's also made by small stones, which is typical for this area. And it links together kind of this whole complex of buildings. Here we have the tunnel. Underneath the stair, not visible. So you can enter underneath uh, to the museum. Here you see the again the artist's house and the church. So it makes like, uh, yeah, like an assemblage. And in the end, it's one organism. Um, together with this building, which is in the front, which uh, was kind of the house where the monks lived before when they made the beer in this building. So to understand this, this history of this place, which is a very important layer of the whole project, uh, we see the transformation actually from the 12th century. Um, we marked it here with these turquoise points. These were the starting points of the building structure. Um, they already existed at this time. So it was kind of an alpine monastery structure. And here near the river, where it is in the end the old brewery, here the hospice, the, the house where the monks lived, and here the houses of the priests. We have to say that all these people, in the same time, they were also farmers. So the structure of the houses, they always has the typologies of, of these kind of houses, which are very typical. So you see in the 16th century, um, there were added parts to the existing ones, the blue ones, and th so it went on. Then in the 19th century, we had this big extension in the back with the brewery. It was a functional building. As Lucas mentioned, it was very rigid, but in the same times very unique and nice. And for sure, we wanted to keep all these elements in our project. And you see here, after our transformation, it's kind of the same as 100 years before, but they are just very small, precise elements, like these uh, small walls and the ice tower. Here we see kind of the location between river, uh, forest, and mountain. And these red ones are like elements of rock which are visible. So that means in this area, this rock is visible when you pass, also when you pass here the street. And it's kind of the linking fundament of the whole project. Here we have a plan that you see kind of this border of this rock. It's this one. And you see that the houses were against the rock and they were inside the rock. So in these cellars, which is a typical way to make the, the cellars in the medieval times, we have this, these round votes in the rock. And the, the big potential now was to, you see it here, to link this together, so to expand it, like here. And the challenge was to kind of maintain the historical structure, but in the same time to link them together and to make it usable for a museum of such a scale. You see here the precise rectangular spaces we will see afterwards some images. Um, in contrast to these very rocky spaces, as on this image while we were digging to them. And this was a photo of this space. And then through some minimal linking parts, it, uh, we reached kind of a richness of, of a, um, like a passage through the whole thing that you are sometimes in a historical cavey space, and sometimes you are in a very clean, um, climatized, uh, functional, and uh, flexible space. Here the works we did. Um, it was a long procedure to do it. 
it was uh, we took out tons of material uh, of this stone, which is the amphibolite. It's uh, the hardest stone which exists in Switzerland. And for sure, because it's very rare, we kept this stone and we recycled uh, it for the project. We will show you later uh, in which areas it was the case. Here you see one of the big caves, uh, excavations we did. On this side you see we had to reinforce the old structure. So in these parts we have the, the historical um, um, votes where the cooling of the beer happened. Here another view. So we worked kind of around the historical um, substance, but we didn't destroy them. We reinforced it and we kept it and we strengthened it uh, uh, with, with spatial intervention and with the structure, as you see on this image, um, with this layering. This photo was uh, underneath this um, ice tower. As Lucas mentioned, this is like the backbone of the project. And through this and the uh, um, extension underneath from this situation to this situation, uh, we created kind of a um, passage through the museum with a lot of different uh, impressions. So we have very high spaces, but we have also narrow spaces. And we have also more organic spaces like this one, which is in the rock. And the combination, I think, is one of the success of the museum. Um, yeah, that you, you, when you walk through, you have always a, a different approach to the space and the art. And you can discover a lot of things. So this is a plan um, from construction. Um, you see very precise intervention. We worked actually as a, as a doctor or, or a surgeon. So we cut it in the existing structure, but in the same time we kept the old walls and the rock, like here or here. And with the concrete walls we reinforced that also the existing structure. And then with some technical elements like the lift, for example, we could make it work, that it's also working as a museum to reach all the different levels. And here we see like the yellow, there are breakthroughs, which were set very precise to make, th make it everything accessible. This is a close-up of, of this rock, um, the texture we found, this uh, structure which came to us. This is an image of the floor which is done by this rock we took out. So we reused it, we made it small like sand and we make the concrete out of it and we put it into the spaces. Like here you see, it's like a carpet that we put uh, into these different spaces. And thanks of that, and also the white walls, it kind of linked everything together. Yeah, this is now the, like the main entrance house. You see here the, the door, which was existing. So this is the main street, which is the Plaza in summer, with this extension. So we enter to this building, and we don't know what we will see for the first time. So it's the same way where the horses went down, because they had stables in here for the transportation of the beer and the water. So you enter. 
and then through a very narrow passage underneath the street, you come to the museum spaces. And this is also very a precise uh, intervention we did, that you have the very narrow passage, so the movement of the people uh, were slowed down a lot. So you have to go after each other. So the time has another uh, aspect when you enter to this museum. Here we have, we are now in the ice tower looking to the grotto. So we have these white walls which we did with kalk. This is a traditional material. It's a natural material so the walls can breathe and it's very good for art and for the spaces. And in contrast to these spaces, we have this, these caves, which is, uh, when you walk through the museum, this is like a surprising element or like a, like a pause or like a, how do you say, it's like a, it's like a break. So you feel also it's, it's a different climate. It's, uh, it's not, very hot, so it's cold, and you have this experience, being in this rock. This is one of the views we have from, the, from this grotto to, to a white uh, control space. So you always have, in each space you have a, like a window to go through. This is a precise um, kind of a corridor who links from the ice tower to the more flexible space. And in between this passage, there is one of our favorite rooms, which is the so-called weeping room. So this is the place where the water comes out. So the source of water is running down this, this rock. And when you enter to this space, you hear this also. There is this, uh, suddenly you are in a space where you hear the nature. So it's, yeah, always when we are there, I think we, we want to see it, how it looks, because it changed. This wall is never the same. Every time when you go there, sometimes it's completely wet. Sometimes you just see one uh, running water from here to here. And here you have the scale comparison, so this is uh, this historical vote. And in the back, there is the, like a water basin, who takes the water and brings away. Compared to this natural space, we have this flexible space. This is the, the big sal, which is for the whole entity, and it's kind of unique. It has five meter high. And it's, for this small village, it's a huge thing. And, but you don't see it from outside. Because we wanted that it's, that we have this huge respect to the history. But in the same way, we, we yeah, also the client, they wanted this big space to, to be a, a professional museum. All technical things we could hide in this gap. Um, all sensors, etc. The lightning we designed by our own with uh, with Charlie Keller, which is a very simple industrial product, and the same way, uh, very elegant, um, that we just could screw on the wall. Then here, after the big space. We have the stair who goes up. It's also done with the concrete, with this blackish, greenish concrete. And it leads you through also a narrow passage along this uh, concrete wall, which is a remaining part of the, of the rock wall which was there. And it is, it's bended. So if you walk up, um, you go to the next the space, you kind of feel that the mountain comes to you. Then here you have a view to the, the step of the walls, 
to the outside, that you have a kind of a connection to the small village. We also did it small because you had to have walls, but also not to have a too big intervention from outside. Then compared to this um, modern space with very straight walls, we have this more uh, um, historical spaces with openings that we found. So this opening was always there. It was part of this brewery typology. The walls here, they are not straight, they are waved because of the wall behind. And this was important for us that you feel this as soon you enter to an old part, the walls get uh, kind of waved. They are not straight. Here it's also in the old part and we created kind of the focus on one window to the nature. And as you can see, now we changed the floor. Now it's wood. It's the, the, the local wood, Lerche, which uh, we could, which is actually just from the wood behind here. And the length is always the length of the room, so till 12 meters. And yeah, on this image you see that we also closed some windows to have walls. And now you see from one um, tower space to the other, the structure of the wood. This is uh, typical for this region that you take the massive wood to show it also. And that you feel also that you are in the Alpine region. This is another space, more length, also focus with one window. Then the toilets we wanted to create kind of different, so we used this one material, this uh, ceramics, which are handmade, so every tile is different. But if you enter to this toilet space, it um, gives you a kind of feeling that you are at home. Uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of an at other atmosphere, but also with the local wood. Then if you come out, you are again in, the, in these historical spaces. And we wanted to show like here, this is a, an old beam, steel beam, which is a, a relict of this industrial um, brewery spaces. And also this stone wall we wanted to show and not to cover with the white plaster. Another relict is the back wall of the ice tower. Here you see a small line of this sculpture of Monika Sosnowska. The cuts we did, they are very precise all the time to be in contrast with the historical wall. And uh, when Charles uh, took us through, through the museum, through the inside of the museum, for us, also, the outside was as important or became as important while we started to model um, the outside with these stone walls, which, as we said, they cover up actually the extension uh, which happened underground. And there are a lot of um, inside, outside um, views, accesses, and accesses. And these these stone walls, they really link the, the museum to the nature and then they really fade, they fade out and then sometimes they really cover up, covered up in snow in winter. Um, and also we integrated stairs um, and very nicely done rails. Um, so you can actually walk around also the buildings and you, you can, very now more and more you can discover some some art that is displayed there as well. 
So you have like terraces between the buildings, we and then you always find new small paths around those buildings, and you can walk around. Um, and then also when you just go a few steps back, the, the, the whole museum almost seems to disappear again. So the scale is really this display of scale inside, outside with the existing. This was really interesting in this project. Um, then we put this short focus on this artist residency. This is the building that actually was added on, the third building that was added on. Um, and it should host all the artists, so there are small rooms for artists, there's a space where they could work, and there's even a space where they can display art. Um, that was the basic idea. And during construction, it was a in really bad condition, actually. We tried to remain everything that was still valuable, um, but we really had to, first of all, like really bind it together because it was closer to be, cl close to be damaged. And what's so special about this house is that it's it's built so close to this rock, so there's really like a, a, a tension between the, the rock and and this and this building, and you also see it from inside. This is the former barn of the of the building, and um, so we had a chance to implement like a huge window, which is quite a surprise in this building, showing this rock becoming even a part of the inside actually, and. In the basement, in a sim very simple way, we had to re reinforce the building as well. We just put like a, a, found a foundation below, a concrete one, and um, put some simple lights for for exhibitions. And there also was one um, old room which we could just restore in a very nice way. This was the artist residency, and now Josh was going to talk about the old, the third building, the old brewery. To sum it up, yeah, this is the the house near the river, and also the foundation is based on the rock who comes down, and the whole museum is on it, and also is the base of this house. The, if you look at the facade you see that the openings are kind of very functional. So we, you have sm rather small openings on the massive volumes. And also here, here was the place for the horses. Here was the small hall where they put out the, the shit of the horses. And underneath was the place for the mist. And actually, all kind of openings are in the houses we treated. They are f just functional, but in the same time, so beautiful. On this part, this was, the, was the, sp the space where they stored the hay for the animals. So they, it was always a big space. And this we learned also in our, one of our first projects in Schlin that we could transform it into a living space. So these are like cathedrals of these houses. Here, we want to show you that we did the floors with the stones of the river. So we took it, actually the ones which were left, we took it, but the rest, we, we took it from the river just in front of it and made the whole floor out of it. And these are in the spaces of the very old uh, medieval structure from the 12th century. Also the windows, we took it as it is. So this is a bit smaller, this is a bit bigger. And the angles were kind of done as they was. So we didn't straight up anything. This structure of the ceiling is kind, kind of interesting because it's a mixture of wood and stones. And the wood is kind of conic and holds together with the stones and they need each other. So the support of the elements above could be held by this uh, system. Just beside there is a piece of Villa Roja, an artist which made this layering of history 
as a sculpture in the middle of the space. Also with him, it was as with the other artists, uh, collaboration between um, us and them, and also the owner of the museum. And then it, it, it was always a nice uh, dialogue. Here is this hall I mentioned. Um, we wanted to show that the light comes in where the shit of the horses went out hundreds of years. This is just above. This is the auditorium. They stored the hay, as I said. So th that's why there were big windows, so the air could come in. Um, also, this is very functional. And now we made huge glass to see the outside and the light can come in. But we have like fragments of this um, old balcony that is now a shadow for the light and uh, makes a lot of the atmosphere of this uh, space. Also the structure, here you see the existing structure and with the new structure we always take the geometry um, so that's why this is narrow and this is wide, because of the logic. This is the entrance to this space. It's done by a local artist, Mirko Baselja, which is made by pine wood, 12, 20 centimeters. So when you enter through this door, you smell this wood, and this uh, lasts about more than 100 years. You always smell it, and also the Small stiva Lucas showed in the artist's house is done by this wood, and this is a tradition. So they take this wood, and even people say if you smell it, you will live much longer. Beside this door to this plaza we were mentioning, we have an entrance to the bistro. This is this arch and the historical door. Which, which actually was in the neighbor village. And about 100 years, one farmer took it and put it here. And this is one history one of the locals told us. Here you see a scraffito we found. This is a technique where they scratched into the plaster. So when it's wet, they, they take an, a needle and then they, they do it by hand without any um, lines or something. And it's like an ornament. But we found it, so we restored it and we show it again to show the history. This is, if you turn um, 180 degrees, you look up, you see this gap between these two buildings. buildings. And you see even the mountain who goes up. Or if it's a lot of light, the reflection of the mountain in the back. We used from outside just three materials. This calc plaster, this copper, uh, and the wood, the left here. Here you see again a situation between the houses. So it, this is the entrance building, and these are the two museum's buildings. And here, a fragment of the base of the structure of the whole museum, this, this rock that we left, we left it here. More down, you see again this rock with this opening goes into the grotto, which we saw before. Now we go a step back. We see again this, this uh, assemblage of the buildings. We looked at it when we did it, that the roofs, that they are kind of similar. They speak with each other, but they have very small nuance of, of proportions which belong then to the building itself. But overall, if you walk through here, and everybody can walk through here. Uh, 
you feel it that they belong to together. Now a step more back, you see the river, you see here the forest mountain, and this concentrating historical part um, in the in the valley with a church with the von Planta Tower here with the with the historical buildings which are now the museum but it's kind of very sensitive and we try to do all our inventions um, to be timeless um, and kind of a precise and minimal approach. Step back again, you, we see again the huge mountains and the very small village. Merci beaucoup. Merci. <laughs> It was longer than we expected, but maybe there's still time you have to say. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I really like traveled with you into the depths of uh, the rocks and, and, and to this place again. Um, just a word to our online um, followers in case there are questions. Um, there is a chat function where you can just um, insert your question. Um, maybe there is a question here. So, I actually have one. <laughs> um, uh, we saw a lot of empty spaces and I was really wondering how um, did you work with um, the, the use, the future use of this space when you conceived it? And maybe um, I'll just add for um, our public um, one detail because we didn't really talk about the museum as such. So it's a museum that was founded by um, uh, Grazina Kuszlik, uh, a private collector from Poland, and her collection is actually from um, basically mostly Eastern Europe, European art, and with a focus on um, female artists, not only, but that's really an, an, a strong interest of her. Um, and so, how how much did this collection and this interest and and actually also the the contact with with uh, her um, influence the whole coming about of of this? Because now it in your discourse it sounded like um, somehow the history and the material and everything that you found there somehow um, drove you to these conclusions and solutions. And I was just interested to hear a little bit about the constellation. Um, of the museum. Um, yes, of course, that uh, the, the Kozna Kulczyk as an investor or uh, as having this vision of a, of a museum is a strong person in this project. Um, but we, from our side, we are also, I mean, uh, we are the stronger advocates of the buildings, so to say, and we are very strong in the concepts. And um, of course, she had a certain program in mind, like she said, like, I want to have um, so many square meters of, of exhibition space and the idea of maybe apartments and, but this changed a lot throughout the process because we were, when we started to work with the buildings, we discovered potentials that she maybe didn't think of and then, and then new ideas came up. Um, and also we, in maybe in the beginning there was the idea that this museum would only host her collection, but now then also in long discussions we knew that there's a huge potential that you don't have like a permanent installation like for the whole place. You, you should have changing um, environment and so also the, the rooms. Our main thing was just to offer like a huge variety of different spaces with a lot with different qualities so you can play with that because this is this is what the place just gives you this is just for free and then you should just take it and try to play with it yes uh, um, it was a process the whole thing and she was a very important person in the whole we had a lot of discussions we spoke she wanted to be involved in every detail 
and it was like a journey. It started first, it was just this, as we said, this house, and then we found this this story about uh, that they were linked together with this tunnel underneath, and and then th this was a process, and she she was always open for it, and. I think it, in the end it was a very good collaboration and it ended up just because everybody was involved in this project to be like that. And yet this openness and also the courage to do it, I think, was inspiring for us. One example is the Grotto that, uh, that we left it as, as it is and she agreed it for it. So. Uh, and we didn't even put the door. So you really have this fluent way go through and these surprising moments. And also the openness that suddenly we found this rock in the end of the tunnel. And then we together, we decided on site to leave it, for example, to, to see the nature and things like that. And yeah, I think it's, Everybody had his very important role, and for sure, without Grazina Kulcic, this didn't happen. And yeah, we, we liked it to do it. And our, also now to see these images, it's always um, it's always nice. Even now, I did discover things uh, again, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, beautiful. Also, for us, it was important that we also represent somehow the people in the village because they also it's also somehow their building because they grew up with it as children. They were playing games in those uh, remote abandoned rooms from the, of the brewery and so on. So we also had to take them with our with us on 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 the, this journey and so that they accept it and then, then, then they know what's going on and so on because also they had, in, had to endure a lot, of, a lot of construction side noise and a lot of digging and a lot of dust for, for a long time. So and now the acceptance, it's really rooted now in this, in this village and this is, was also for us from the beginning very important to aim that. Yeah, that they were included somehow. It, it is a huge, um, museum for this very small village and but because of this sensitivity and this uh, I think clever working with the local people which we suggested and Krasina agreed um, and for example the carpenter Peter Müller which just lives beside he made a lot of work and he's the neighbor so he and he knows all of the f all the village and it was very important to integrate people like that. Yeah, thank you for, for elaborating on that point because th that would have been my next question to, to know how you actually got all that local knowledge because there is an incredible amount of um, craft um, that you, you uh, very local craft and also a lot of these um, yeah, the history of, of the usage of, of the building and everything that you, you discovered. So I was really wondering how you somehow dug out not only excaved um, the, 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 the actual material on the rock, but also all these um, layers of history and of knowledge um, that are on that site. So apparently it was really um, a, a dialogue. Um, yeah, and also people, they just bring it to you because they're happy to, because they... They, if they know something, if they have some knowledge, they just bring it to you and want to share it with you. And um, it's a very fast process of being involved with everyone. That's yes, and then you have to, to pick up the, the right ones. Exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> for example, the plaster people, they have so huge knowledge and we are very thankful that we could work with them. It cost probably more for sure but the quality now it's so so good and you feel it you I mean every wall of the historian buildings it's different and normally they want to do it straight but um, yes it, it was a very good collaboration with them
And is there um, anything that you took away and that you use in your actual practice now, in be it material or, or other insights or, or, I don't know, experiences or, or um, methods uh, or, or viewpoints that, that still influence you now as um, in your individual practices uh, and for your buildings that you're working on now? I mean, what I, what's really different if you work in such a small alpine site where the culture of, of, of work is different than now when I do projects in Zurich, um, is that they really identif identify themselves with the projects. So the craftsmen, so it, the dialogue is really deep and they really are curious from the beginning to the end. And, and so this is something I would try to more and more also do on other construction sites, just to be, give them the feeling that they are part of the team and not just, okay, my job is just this and then I'm gone. So um, this was really special here, I have to say. Yeah, that they are proud to be part of it. And yes, as it was a very intense work, so we, we had, um, we experienced so many things and with every experience you have doing architecture, you learn and you can use it for the future. And yeah, one thing for sure is that to, to, to have a huge respect of, of, of a, such a substance, but also to be, um, to have the courage to break through things, to, m to make something happen that would not be possible. This was, for example, something. <laughs> Well, I think um, that this um, combination of, of all these elements that you said, this local knowledge, courage to also like do some gestures, but also in the respect of, of um, the tissue that is there, it was recognized. And uh, that's actually something that I didn't mention in the introduction, and I would like to mention it now as a closure, that your um, building was um, a laureate of the Swiss Building of the Year in 2019. Um, and it was also listed um, as one of the 25 best buildings of the 21st century by The Guardian, for example. And I think it got also other prizes. Um, so it's really something that has been recognized. And um, thank you very much for sharing um, all these beautiful images and also your insights. And um, I'm inviting everybody to go and visit this in Sush. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>